All right, guys, so I'm finally back with a video. It's been a long time, I know. Florida has had some really crazy weather over the past uh, couple of months with the hurricanes, unprecedented flooding, and all of, the, all of the things like that, plus my own personal life. So finally getting back out. We're gonna go look for some fossils. The main river that we usually hunt that's kind of nearby is still too high. So what we've decided to do is we found a landowner who's got a little creek running through his property. And we're not too far from those rivers we usually hunt, so we're hoping that this creek actually has fossils. Uh, the only problem is we can't get a boat back here. So we're gonna be hiking in today. He's uh, kind of given us a little bit of trails to start on, but then it really just goes into remote bush. And, and that takes a long time to get through. It's gonna be a lot of spiders, a lot of cobwebs, and we have to carry our gear in. So we're only gonna be able to bring um, our, our Nomad with us, which is able to be battery operated and, and go up to 40 feet, which is pretty nice. So we'll be able to get underwater and we'll be able to hike out to the location. We just have no idea what we're gonna get. So with any luck, we'll find something. So let's go ahead and get this hike over with yeah. and see if we can't find a- Hope it's worth it. <laughs> a single fossil today would be a big win for us because yeah. it means maybe we could come back and, and hunt this while the main river's uh, flooded. We always hunt rivers like the Peace River and stuff. And it's just right now is- We like them when they're lower. Way too deep and, and dark. So let's go see if we can get anything. So um, we just got to our first spot. That was a long hike. Um, this is it, just a little creek. But the cool thing is, Viz looks pretty good. Let's see if I walk in here. You can see decent, oh, pretty strong current. Um, you know, like I said, the main rivers right now are really all flooded. And I bet you anything that when water drops, this creek right here, right now it looks like it's about maybe anywhere from five to 10 feet tops on the bends from what we can see. But I bet you anything that when the water level goes down, this is probably ankle deep, so. This is actually the entire lower mandible of a mastodon. So two sets of teeth, everything was there. It's, it's very, very fragile. It's falling apart in our hands. These are actually tusks. So this is ivory and mastodons had two smaller uh, lower tusks that came out. Those are actually complete and we have the pieces. So this is an incredible find. And now um, Henry and I have to hike this about uh, five miles out of here which is gonna be really hard. We actually have to leave this in the water, hike back to our, our, our put-in spot, and, and then hike back out and get this. That's gonna be painful, but there's just no other way. This is a, 
probably at least 30 or 40 pounds worth of, of fossils and we, we struggle just to get all of our gear to this really remote location so just wanted to show you guys what we got look at that you can just see the roots growing in there very soft bone look at those teeth though look at that Oh man, they're bigger than I expected. Okay. Now there's hey, if you want to turn it sideways. Look at how fragile that is. I know. It's... Oh. Turn, turn it sideways, because I still... Well, just tilt it a little bit, because I still need to get okay. the broken half in there. That's probably good. This looks fragile, that looks fragile anyway. Okay. So if we can get it mostly... Okay. It's not really going to rest like that, but we can try. That's... You know, it breaks. It breaks? Here. This is everything. We, uh, when we were down there diving and pulling it out, we saw the synthesis was connected. So it's all there. When we had to get it out, though, it just, it's so fragile it broke. Watch this. I can scratch that off with my fingernail. That's how fragile this is. So I'm going to definitely need some treatment. But the name of the game now is let's see what we can preserve. Okay, um, I think I'm gonna need more pad here on the bottom of mine, just because it's bigger than it looked, or bigger than I thought. So, let's get this in here. Big boy. All right, let me come close for the reveal. Dust it off a little. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> That's cool. There's your five humper. There it is. Will it fit? Should barely fit. Man, that's insane. You want to carry the heavy one back? I'll take the broken one just in case. So I buried the teeth in the tusk, the lower tusk over here. <clears throat> These are what we have to worry about. These are very fragile, but beyond being fragile, tusks have been known to pop open. So people will put zip ties on them while they dry. And I have the tips and everything in there, but that is the lower tusk. And I'll probably keep these in water until I can get them properly preserved. I may even use a type of adhesive that can be, can be put on these when they're actually wet and then they'll never deteriorate. Means we had a male. Those tusks? Yeah, I think. Okay, uh, I'm all back. Do it. Let's go. All right.
Hey man, yeah. the jaws that we just got, I didn't get on I didn't get on camera. Oh man. <laughs> but I fixed it. Okay. I got your tooth coming out. That's yeah, probably yeah. the top tooth. Uh it'll I bet it'll match right up to the bottom teeth. We can tell by the pattern, but then those tusks. Dude, this dude. is insane. The tip, the tusk, the jaw. Both of the tips are down to. So <laughs> we 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 never expect to find this stuff, but I'll tell you what, you kind of do because I've come prepared. I actually have zip ties with us. I hiked them out. I remember putting them in the box, and Henry was like, "You know, what are those?" And I said, "Well, if we find a tusk, and it's just unbelievable. I can't believe it that they're down there." So we got <laughs> another tooth. We have the jaws. I think we're getting into the upper teeth. We have one. I bet there's more down there. Yep. And we have the tusks, which. Um, this is a mastodon, so those are all pretty much there. So the Colombian mammoth has these massive tusks that curl, and that's the typical like woolly mammoth type, type of tusk you're used to seeing. Well, mastodon, they roamed around in the woods, and they had much tighter, much straighter tusks that weren't much bigger than what's down there. And so the amazing thing is those are complete. And if you see the tusks are orientated in the proper position for that tooth you got, mm -hmm to be the maxilla so we right. we probably have the animal positioned all correctly which means this is all articulated which is a which is great because it means this is an isolated teeth and tusks this is all this is a grave site and uh what we'll probably do is get this out of situ as carefully as we can get it to the edge and uh actually i'll see what kind of pres state of preservation they're in down there i might even just get the zip ties in a minute and take them down there so we're gonna just work it out really carefully just like we did the jaws all right yep. you ready to get back down there yep All right, so uh, after we hiked that mandible out, we knew we needed to get back and just double check it. Um, it is getting a little late, but uh, we decided to get back in because we had a little bit of battery and check it out. It's uh, unbelievable. This is Mastodon Tusk. So this is ivory, and it's, it's starting to break here. This trunk actually broke off, so it's very, very fragile, but... It, but actually it's for Florida rivers, the state of preservation is pretty good. I, I have a, a good hope that we can get these out of here and get them stabilized. I wanna show you this backside right here. So unlike the Colombian mammoth where they had these really huge tusks that curled up and it's, it's more iconic of what you think about when you think of a woolly mammoth and their, their massive tusks. Mastodons were much smaller. And this cavity right here is actually how, how they would grow. So they would kind of grow in a, in a cone shape and push the tusk out. And what this means right here, why I'm excited about this cavity and this cavity, it means that this is the whole entire tusk. So it's not just a fragment. It's, it's like an entire tusk because they had a lot smaller tusks. They'd be able to go through the woods instead of open grassland like the Columbia mammoth. So unbelievable because Florida, it is hard to get a complete tusk. Now we have the challenge of hiking these out and it's gonna be tough, but we're hopeful. And we also got more. So we have the upper um, teeth right here. So what's really neat here is, hold them back how you had them real quick. So keeping them like that, look at this wear pattern right here. See how it just goes right into that tooth. We know these definitely matched up. So this is these two teeth were from one side of the upper jaw. Um, you can just see that the wear patterns and what's going to be really cool is we're going to be able to match this wear pattern right here to the bottom jaw. And so you're going to be able to tell how these teeth were, were working in a, in a grinding motion with each other. And that's going to confirm it's from the same animal. We do know that though. These came from less than a few inches away. Now what's really sad at this point in time is we have this one. And so we know that there's another five hump tooth down there because there's one more that belongs to this. The animal definitely had those four teeth on each, well, two teeth on each side. So we're gonna go back in and really work hard to try to get that since we just know it's down there and hopefully we can get it. But if we don't, we already have so, so much and now it's time to hike this stuff out. So let's get it done. <laughs> 